Hello and welcome to your in-depth weekly horoscope for week commencing the 1st of May for the Sun or the Ascendant. I'm going to give you some standout details to look out for, but please stay with me. I will then explore each of the 12 zodiac signs in much greater detail. If you're a returning visitor, thank you so much for joining me once more. If you're new here, it's great to have you with us. I'd be honoured if you would subscribe. Please click or tap on the bell notification symbol. Also, if you'd like to get your free daily horoscope fired to your device each morning, please see the link beneath this video where you can subscribe. And if you'd like to have a one-to-one -one with me, please also see below where you can read my testimonials. Now this week begins with a really important astrological event and that's called the Mercury Kazemi with the Sun. Mercury of course is retrograde at the moment in the sign of Taurus and that's asking us to think very much about our sense of self-worth, our values, everyday money and the foundations of our life. Also the sign of Taurus where the Sun is located along with Mercury and the North Node and Uranus is very much about food and also about where we gain pleasures. It's ruled by Venus. So the combination of the Sun and Mercury so closely together as we see it from Earth, despite Mercury's retrograde, gives us a chance to try to be more flexible about some of our attitudes, which may be quite uh, stuck and a little bit rigid. So if we can flex, that's a good thing. Now Uranus in Taurus, not its best location, is in a good alliance with Mars in Cancer, also in full. But that combination is asking us to think outside the box. Now, of course, the main event this week is the Scorpio lunar eclipse, an exact mirror image of the Taurus lunar eclipse, which occurred on the 8th of November last year and predicated the financial crisis that we have been going through since then. But Saturn, the planet of restriction, was in the sign of the collective, of the people, uh, the sign of Aquarius when that event occurred. And that led to a lot of restriction for us all, but also a lot of outspoken pushing back around what's seen as perceived unfairness. So I feel that this particular eclipse is going to see more revelations, but also uh, around uh, not just the financial sphere, but also around uh, some very famous people's attitudes to intimacy. So I'm trying to be very diplomatic there. So because Uranus is in the mix, I think we are going to see lots of more shocking revelations over the next six months, but also a continuing push to reset our attitude and relationship to our consumption of resources. So we're being asked, particularly with Saturn in a great link with the North Node, to actually embrace a more spiritual, emotional and psychological sphere rather than purely a material one. Now, when it comes to romance this week, with Venus and Neptune in a square, uh, exactly on Thursday, but in touch with one another all this week within three degrees, things can really seem a little confusing. If there is someone who's being very flattering, but rather elusive, do proceed with caution. And that's the great thing about this Taurus energy this week, because it's asking us to gravitate towards the things that are really solid tangible and give us a sense of security you know whether it's making our own food from scratch growing our own vegetables going for a nice walk in the country having a lovely cup of tea with someone we're very fond of those solid secure things can be a great antidote to the swirling mist of neptune applying to venus which can be very flirty but also very deceptive so if you do meet someone that you find to be very alluring do proceed with a degree of caution. But then on Sunday, Venus relocates, joining with Mars in Cancer. If you have or do make some changes to where you live this week, which wouldn't be a surprise, 
or some kind of rental or house purchase plan takes a, a lively step forwards. I feel that what Venus does is bring a more healing balm to the more aggressive energies of Mars, which of course is more action orientated, but a bit defensive and a bit moody in the sign of Cancer. So there's a little bit more of a, a softening as this week draws to a close, but a great opportunity to think about redecoration or some kind of family gathering or reunion. Now, please stay with me for your in-depth forecast from Aries through to Pisces. If you would like to understand how serious astrology can work its way into your situation in such a profound way if you give me three pieces of personal birth data of time, date and place of birth, I can produce for you your life roadmap report, totally unique to you, which can help you to understand some of the patterns that have gone on in your life, but also get a much more intimate understanding of how to work with them. In my special package of 30% off, you can also get your 12 month personal forecast. This can give you Syrian insights for the months ahead, but if you don't know your time, my solar package, which I've recently developed, and if you are someone who really enjoys watching your sun forecast, if you don't know your ascendant, because you don't have an exact idea of your time of birth, then these charts can be very, very helpful to you. Again, the same package, 30% off. Please see the link below. So Sagittarius, your week commencing the 1st of May forecast is really fascinating. If you go back to those five months of 2018 when Uranus nibbled into your sixth solar house of health, work, organisation, but full time since March 2019, I feel things have been a bit jagged, a bit edgy, Perhaps your physical vitality at times has been really high at some moments, at other moments feeling quite wrung out. Um, but I feel that Uranus has probably gifted you a lot of new insights and fresh ways of looking at things. So the fact that Uranus this week continues to connect to Mars, the planet of drama, and of course the planet that rules uh, the second decan of your sign. So um, Mars in the sign of Cancer, technically not its best location, as with Uranus in Taurus, but I feel for you that eighth, sixth house can be to do with uh, financial opportunities, business situations, job offers, but you need to be very flexible, something you don't have an issue with because you're a mutable sign. But you only want to be flexible in a way that feels comfortable because of your need for freedom and space and also for meaning. You don't just want to do a role to collect the money. It has to have some kind of gripping element that engages you. Otherwise, you get very bored. So if you have got a role at the moment that is a bit workaday, I think Mars and Uranus plus the Kazemi between Mercury and the Sun is asking you to rethink. So though Mercury retrograde gets a lot of publicity for the glitches that it creates, and of course it can, and the sixth house can be about appointments, can be to do with interactions with, uh, with uncles, aunts, anything to do with pets, you know, whether they've got in inoculations, just check your calendar to make sure that nothing's uh, missing in terms of, of your awareness of any appointments this week. But I actually feel that Mercury retrograde provides opportunities. It just doesn't get, it does amongst the more serious astrological community get that profile, but the kind of more popularist image is that it can only be a snag, uh, an instrument of snag. It is true that Venus is in your opposite sign, which can be really helpful around relationships, but it is in a confusing angle with Neptune. So if you're not quite sure where you stand with someone, I feel that what all this sixth house energy, including the Mercury retrograde will do, is make you a little bit more focused on the small things that ordinarily you may shrug off. Small things generally don't appeal so much to you. You have a, a great passion for the big picture, which is terrific. But I think there is a psychological dimension coming through the lunar eclipse on 
Friday, which will be there for the next six months. And if you are one of those Sagittarius people that's relentlessly optimistic and moving on from any setbacks, dusting yourself down, going again, which is such an admirable trait, but remember that can see you accumulate lots of bits and pieces of unresolved emotional debris. So I think this particular lunation, because it's in Scorpio, the sign of secrets, I feel that you may find yourself becoming much more aware of how your psychological energies affect your physical vitality and well-being. So that's the big back background energy for the next six months. But as Venus moves at the end of this week, there could be some seriously good news around a financial matter that manifests over the following three weeks. Or it could be that you're going to have a really deep connection to someone and it may have a real sensual uh, dimension to it. It's been a real pleasure being with you, Sagittarius. Thank you so much for joining me. Please like, comment or subscribe.